It's really lovely to be here uh, this evening. Um, thank you all for uh, being with me. Um, I'd just first like to start off by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands that I'm on, um, the people of the Kulin Nation. Um, and I pay my respects to their elders past and present and emerging. Uh, as um, Hannah said, I'm uh, the uh, senior content producer at ABC Education, and um, I uh, make digital content for English language learning. And um, as you can imagine, with the pandemic, we have uh, been really busy trying to um, make uh, more content for, for teachers like all of you who would be um, probably using it a lot more than you uh, usually would. Uh, so today I'm focusing on um, a piece of uh, content, a, a program really, that we recently uh, launched at the ABC and it was all around um, the explicit teaching strategy that we wanted to share more about today. So I will just start by sharing my screen first. a second. Um, can everybody see the screen? Yeah. Yep, looks good. Yeah, that's great. All right. So um, basically, uh, we are all sort of working in very um, uh, strange times. Uh, although it's been a year and a half, uh, I think it has probably uh, changed the way we all uh, approach teaching and learning. And um, for us in particular, um, we noticed that there was a lot of um, content out there that uh, is, you know, really sort of flooding the market, but uh, there isn't really quality content um, that teachers can immediately go on and use. So we, um, so my, the presentation that I'm, uh, going to share with you today is basically how to encourage your learners and, and make sure they're continually excited. Obviously being um, remote and teaching online is it's encouraging them and making them excited about learning is quite, uh, quite a challenge. Um, so I wanted to first start by sort of getting everyone to think about how um, their classroom has changed. So obviously we have gone from um, the picture on the left, if you're looking at it as a teacher, that's that would have been your view where you are, um, you know, uh, sort of walking around your classroom, facilitating a group discussion. And um, now fast forward uh, to the times we're in right now, it's probably more the picture on the right, which is you're staring at a screen um, and talking to, um, you know, a bunch of uh, uh, video tiles or or just stills um, or blank, sometimes blank screens because students don't switch on um, their video sometimes. And so obviously that gets us thinking about how do we um, get our students excited and how do we engage them? How do we make sure that, um, you know, they're really sort of, they're really getting what they want and we're really supporting them even though we're not physically um, in front of them anymore as we would have been in the past. Uh, so, I also want to just address why this is important. So e-learning e is, as I said, a common practice now. And judging by the way the pandemic is playing out, it's probably uh, going to be around for a while. So it was really a good time to sort of look at this and think a little bit more about teaching practice in the classroom. Um, of course, as many of you would um, identify with this next point that, you know, engaging students remotely is, is quite a challenge. I was recently um, teaching a class um, where uh, a student just refused to switch on their camera and I really wanted to get to them and I said, oh, it would have been just so nice if I was just right in front of the student and I could really see what was going on. There are so many nonverbal cues that we no longer can um, pick up as teachers because we are physically away from them. Um, and then, you know, encouraging them because we don't really know what's going on, encouraging students um, in, you know, challenging themselves or trying to understand a piece of language or a, a particular uh, learning point can be very challenging. And it can be also very problematic because we're not, we may be trying to get through to them and they can get frustrated easily uh, because we're not 
we don't have a sense of the entire situation. And and I've, I've also said here, perhaps even, you know, being excited about learning can be out of question because learning is a very social experience. And, you know, often our classrooms are the place where they, they, they have a safe space to come together and practice um, what they're learning. So uh, I'm also sure that, you know, often um, an ESL classroom is, you know, very, the, the approach we take is very student centered. Um, so for example, a lot of eliciting, a lot of asking questions, um, group discussions um, are what you know, we would typically use. Um, and again, um, this is really, really good to have regardless in a virtual environment. But what we noticed was that um, we came across the explicit teaching um, strategy. It is identified as one of the 10 high impact teaching strategies by the um, or HITS by the Department of Education Victoria. And um, it, it was an opportunity for us to experiment with that and make some um, make a program out of this teaching strategy because we felt that it was probably a good teaching strategy to use um, when you're in a virtual environment. And as I will explain later, we have used um, video as the medium to teach, explicitly teach uh, language uh, in this case. Uh, we focused on academic English skills, um, but I think uh, this could be also adapted to any type of, you know, English for specific purposes that you might be teaching. Um, so I'm using academic English uh, as an example, academic English skills as an example here. So what is explicit teaching? As I said, it's uh, it's one of the hits. Um, it's basically um, a lot of research has been done by John Hattie and his team. And um, it's basically proven that it helps increase student learning when applied in a classroom. Um, and when, when teachers use this teaching strategy, they're, they're really demonstrating uh, and modeling what exactly they need to do and how to do it. Uh, so this is kind of the steps the teacher make, it takes. First, they explain exactly what they're going to do, what the learning intention of the session is and what success looks like. So at the end of the session, they should be able to do this and this. And, and they make this very clear and transparent to the students at the start of the lesson so that the learning is clear and they can focus. Again, as, as I said, because we are not right in front of our students, um, this is uh, helpful to get them to really focus and stay on that one specific point they'd have to take away at the end of a, a class. Um, and then the teacher demonstrates the, the particular lesson point by modeling. So for example, if we're learning how to build academic vocabulary, um, we will say today we're going to learn how to build academic vocabulary. And here are, we are going to, here are five steps we're going to learn. And these are the five steps. And taking, um, using, a, using an example, the teacher would then demonstrate how exactly to do it. Um, as, as the teacher goes, again, you know, we check for understanding as we would um, otherwise as well. And at the end of the lesson, we bring it all in and tie it together. So in, in short, this is um, what we can also refer to as the I do, we do, and you do model. And um, the, the way I um, explored this model was looking through uh, was looking at it through video. So I felt that um, video was a very good uh, way of explicitly teaching without having um, the same voice talk over. So often in your lesson, perhaps you might feel that, oh, you know, I'm the only one talking and my students aren't really talking to me. Um, showing a video like this, often uh, showing a video that teaches the student exactly, uh, an exact learning point often helps uh, because that means that, you know, it takes, the, takes you away um, from, from bring, uh, you know, being in front of them all the time to have them turn their attention to someone else. Um, so I've just put up some stills. Um, I've left the website at the bottom of the slide and you can have a look at that, uh, the entire program there. But I've just chosen some stills on, um, to show you how flexible this um, explicit teaching strategy is. Uh, you can teach, um, 
building vocabulary, which is what Jenny is doing on the left there. And you can teach um, listening skills, which is what Eileen is doing on the right. Uh, the, uh, again, here we look at Scott, who's teaching, um, who's teaching, you know, the steps you need to write um, an, in an academic essay, the steps you would need to take to write a proper paragraph. And on the right, you can see that, you know, we're, we're going through some teaching strategies. Shauna is looking at some, um, uh, sorry, reading strategies uh, that you would need um, in, in a university context. So this, the benefit of this really is um, this teaching, teaching strategy is that it's very flexible. It's, you know, across all EAP skills that you might be teaching. And, and as I said, it really could be used for any other um, purpose as well. So um, what uh, we did um, at ABC Education is that we modeled, um, uh, we used the model that I do, we do, you do model where um, the I do was the video, the explicit modeling by the teacher in the form of the video. And in that video the teacher first demonstrates exactly what they need to do which is you know the steps I mentioned earlier and then the teacher works um, with the students in the video to do the we do part where the teacher talks through um, the kind of um, questions uh, that they might be thinking about as they're doing the, the, um, the worked example if you will. Um, so I'm going to play this video to show you what um, exactly uh, I mean here by the I do, we do part of the explicit teaching strategy. And um, I hope you enjoy it. This is from the Academic English Program, which is on ABC Education. And as I said, this is a very good example of how explicit teaching is used um, in a virtual classroom. Um, Shivali, I think you might just need to share your sound too with that. Oh, sorry about that. Um, there should be a share sound option um, at the top, or you can stop sharing and then share again, and then there's a little button that says share sound with it that you need to click. Sorry about that. I will do that again. Share. Yes. Okay. I will uh, do that again. Sorry. Perfect. Hi, my name's Gabby, and today I'm going to be talking to you about using special verbs to express your opinions in academic English. I am sure you're familiar with must, should, and need. You may have seen these words before. They're types of verbs. Should and must are examples of modal auxiliary verbs. Need is a regular verb, although it can be a modal verb too. When we use need, must and should in academic writing, we can use them to show our academic opinion. Our opinion of what we think is a good idea for something to happen. Let's now take a look at a text from a first year university textbook. To see how you can use these special verbs academically in speaking and writing, let's have a look at two sentences from a paragraph. This is a text about sustainability. Governments around the world need to develop rules which speed up the change to sustainable business practices. If change is to happen, government leadership and the business community must be strong. Can you see those special verbs in the sentences? Need and must. Need can be both a regular verb and a semi-modal verb. Here we are using need as a regular verb. In the second example, we are using need as a semi-modal verb. 
But for this lesson, we are not going to use need as a modal verb because we're using it to show our opinion. In these sentences here, the speaker is saying, in my opinion, you need to eat lunch or in my opinion, you don't need to eat lunch. And take note, it would be very unusual to say, I needn't eat lunch. The semi-modal verb form of need is not very high frequency. We can use should and must in the same way to show the speaker's opinion. Let's look at an academic sentence in which the author is expressing their opinion. Governments around the world need to develop rules which speed up the change to sustainable business practices. Governments around the world should develop rules which speed up the change to sustainable business practices. What do you think need means in this sentence? Can you think of modal verbs which can do the same job? Yes, that's right. You can use should. Governments around the world should develop rules which speed up the change to sustainable business practices. You can also use must. Governments around the world must develop rules which speed up the change to sustainable business practices. Now let's think about which is the strongest opinion here. Australia needs to save koalas, Australia should save koalas, or Australia must save koalas. What do you think? That's right, it's C, Australia must save koalas. When we use must in academic writing, it's much stronger. The writer is very, very sure, very certain about their opinion and believes very strongly that it is a good action to take. So now we're almost out of time, so I'm just going to uh, stop it right there, but you can watch the rest of it on, um, on our website or on YouTube on ABC Education. Um, so you can see how Gabby at the first start, at the start, she, you know, explained exactly what we're going to learn today and then demonstrated exactly what we were going to do with those special verbs. And then as you can see here, she's moving into doing it together with the student. Um, and then, as I said, the last part of this is the you do, which is um, uh, what we have uh, done here is looking at how we can make it interactive. So we've used um, uh, TPAC, which is um, one of the uh, EdTech frameworks, as well as um, looking at how we can transform the, the SMA um, methodology as well. We see how we can transform uh, learning a student's learning experience by, do, uh, in this case, by doing an interactive quiz. So watching the video and, you know, um, understanding, uh, to test their understanding, they're using a quiz that's available um, and that's interactive and available online. Um, so, uh, I hope that that was useful um, to all of you. I know that um, teaching online is going to be possibly the norm, um, but happy to take any questions or um, if there are any comments as well. Um, I think you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I didn't leave my email address here, but yeah, really happy to hear uh, from you. And I hope you find the program useful and uh, please let us know what you think. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you, Shivali. Um